Good morning, everyone. I'm going to call the Marion Township Board of Supervisors meeting for Saturday, June 24th to order. The time is now 9.01 a.m. First item is the Pledge of Allegiance. I'd ask everyone to please rise. The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. States of America, Republic, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, one nation under God, under God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty, with liberty and, justice and justice for all. Okay. As always, the meetings are being recorded for both audio and video. We ask that you please silence your cell phones, uh, myself included. I should probably do that now. For the record, we have two of the supervisors attending remotely. Irene is via the phone for the first bit of the meeting that she can attend, and Jim is joined on the Zoom. We have no other Zoom participants at this time. Uh, anyone wishing to address the board uh, to public comment, we ask that you please step up to the microphone. If the microphone is off, please turn it on by pressing the power button to illuminate the red light on the, on the stem. Uh, for anybody that is interested, there are uh, masks and hand sanitizer at the front of the room. This time, I'll open up the floor for public comments. Seeing none, we'll move into the main items for discussion. Uh, the first one is the Act 537. We have our friends from Hydra Terra here this morning. Um, Joe, if you want to come up and turn the mic on, we just have to press it once. And it'll, there we go. Perfect. Good morning. My name is Joe Boldez with Hydra Terra Professionals. Thanks for having us again uh, on a Saturday morning. Uh, <clears throat> we did, uh, Kimberly submitted a sanitary sewer engineer's report. Uh, for your consideration uh, earlier in the week, um, just to kind of highlight some of those things that are on there. A sewer management program, which uh, I did, we did submit a, a proposal to you all uh, to get involved with uh, the administration of the sewer management program. And I'm going to speak through that a little bit in a, in a second here, uh, but also wanted to uh, bring you up to speed on uh, the grant award and the work that we've been doing uh, related to design just recently. Um, scheduled to, to have the geotech come on out and do some soil borings along Canal Road and um, Sheridan, uh, where it crosses uh, 422 to get an understanding of what, uh, what we might find under the ground and then be able to consider that in uh, uh, an evaluation for low pressure sewers. Uh, we'll also be doing the uh, environmental evaluation, so wetland determination, look at any historic buildings or, or structures along the way during that time. And then we'll be doing a physical engineering survey uh, to pick up the data that was developed or captured uh, during the, the geotech and environmental. So for the geotechnical, they would be locating the soil borings, <clears throat> um, the physical location of the soil borings. And then for the environmental, again, they would be picking up like uh, wetland boundaries or stream banks and, and things of that nature. Uh, so that's where we're going with the uh, program grant. Uh, and uh, we're heading in the direction uh, to uh, to prepare a compliance schedule for Pennsylvania DEP as requested uh, at their 524 meeting, which uh, you know everybody attended and I really appreciate that. I think that was a real good show for uh, DEP to know that the township's engaged in, and involved in, in uh, trying to address the needs of the sewer system. Um, so recently I discussed the needs for uh, uh, the special study that uh, we may be preparing based on the, the amount of rock that's encountered along the way. And we confirmed with Tim Wagner of Pennsylvania DEP exactly what uh, those requirements were. Um, we'll, we're in the process, Kimberly and I are in the process of working with your solicitor to prepare a, a draft compliance schedule for uh, your July meeting for consideration, and we'll be sure to get that out well in advance so you all can take a look at it and see if there's anything you would like to suggest changed or consideration of any items. 
the intermunicipal agreements mentioned under uh, on the uh, the engineer's report. Uh, there really hasn't been any movement on that, although yesterday we did get an email from um, your solicitors suggesting that the Hearst development uh, is, I guess, taking some steps in a, in a positive direction for development. And um, Andy suggested a meeting with Wommelsdorf um, to understand how the sewer agreement may or may not change uh to address that Hearst development so as we go uh forward this next month uh, we plan on um, completing the schedule for you and having a draft and then we are in the process of working towards a special study uh, but again we want to get that geotechnical information available so that we can report that in the special study and start um, getting prepared to submit that to Pennsylvania DEP. Any questions from anybody? No. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much, Joe. So the other item is uh, back at the top with the sewer management program. Uh, we're glad to present uh, the professional service agreement that I hope you all have had a chance to take a look at. Uh, Peter and I have discussed this a little bit in the past, and I'm glad to go through it point by point, help you understand what, how we think uh, would be a good place to go uh, with the sewer management program, or I can just cover it very broadly. Uh, I'm glad to do either one that you, you all would like to hear about. I guess, Peter, starting with you, is there any, would you like me to dig in and, and share yeah, with sure. uh, your compadres uh, what, what, what's in here or? Sure. So let me, let me ask the first question. Jim and Irene, have you read through the proposal from Hydroterra yet? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, I like everything in there. The one thing that I, I just kind of want to maybe hammer down a little bit is like the, the fees for stuff is still listed as draft. Um, so I want to kind of get a ballpark of what um, the costing would be for this. Oh, uh, yeah. So the one, the one that we have that you had sent over, like when you go down to the last page with compensation, initial service draft, annual service draft, annual terror tracker fee draft. Ooh. Okay. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. So, briefly. so the one you're referencing is the initial draft that we discussed with Andy and Colin. Okay. We had a conference call. And so upon that conference call and hearing, you know, their feedback and discussion, we went back and I went through with Joe and we revised it. So that email with that latest draft, the final proposal was submitted to um, the supervisor's email, the main township email, Andy Collin, um, Chuck Hess. Yes, that was the one with the engineer's report. So that was sent, I believe, Thursday, Wednesday or Thursday. I just have the one that says draft okay. also. So the Updated report, which we'll make sure that we get circulated. The first year for all services, the Terra Tracker, S&P, the restart, the education, the administration, and the annual, annual reporting would be 18,700, uh, which I just did some quick math. We have about 600 households in the township, give or take. I think we calculate 800. 800 well, is that, is that including Stonefall? Uh, could, that could okay, be. Yeah. Like, I think. Okay, so that would be yeah, because I want to. I want to say it's about six hundred if you exclude stone crop. Uh, either way, the quick math on that is that reduces that down to about thirty bucks a year uh, per household, rather than fifty. Subsequent years, like two, three, and four, are nine thousand three hundred, which takes it down to fifteen dollars a year per household that has a septic tank or on lot sewage system. Um, so this is this is actually I think a step definitely in the right direction that we can comply with what we're supposed to from the state um, and it'll actually be less money for the people that have to have this done. 
Um, I think like we talked about briefly the last time, our best path forward is to have S, uh, SD uh, Chuck's firm do the day-to-day -day SEO operational work. Somebody needs a permit, if somebody has to have something perk tested or whatever, they do that. And then the alternate SEO being Hydroterra runs the, the sewage management program. Um, the the kind of the dovetail on this, and I need to talk to Colin to see if there's some way that we can indemnify the township when the pumpers are out there, because the pumpers are technically agents of the township when they're out there doing that. Um, if there's any way that we can shift risk and liability off of us in that capacity, we simply have the pumpers register with us and they have to submit for a change in our ordinance through the method that we say that you have to put this through online. If you can't put it through online, can't be a registered pumper. Sorry. That is the key, Peter. Now, is really important. I'm sorry, Irene. I heard you back there. No, no, that's okay. Is is Alan present? Alan Majir present at the meeting? Obviously, I don't have visual. He is. He is not. Okay. Yeah, because Sue and I had met with Alan, and again. I, I, you know, I, I thank you again, Joe, to to all the work that you've submitted. You know, my only concern is is, is the original concern that we have with the pumpers. Their their issue is so self serving, um, and we have to make sure that they're registered with the township, that they have the proper certification to do the inspections, and it, we we just don't have any other way to go at this point, um, unless someone's going to magically pop out of the woodwork and say, "I'll be happy to do your inspections." Um, Peter, did you see my write-up as so far as what the conversation was with Alan? Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I, think... I would love it if we would have, right, I, we're just not going to get that person to come and do the inspections for us. Yeah. So that's the hardest part. And we know it's too much of a burden to ask for any SEO. Um, basically, the SEOs just want to do the other perk test, et cetera, et cetera. Um, yeah. No one really wants to do the inspections. So I'm going to ask a question here from a software standpoint with the, the Terra Tracker. Are you able to add something in where when they're submitting the form, there's, we have the list of, I'm, I'm assuming there's some sort of like pumper hauler number, some certificate number that they have from the state. If they're registered with us, have it do a check on that to, when they go to submit it that it goes, okay, you're on the list. And if they're not on the list, it says you need to, you need to call Marion Township and get registered because you are not a certified hauler. So the way the software is set up is that we would need to grant access to any pumper and hauler out okay. there. Okay. okay, so if they're not on the list, they can't even get they to the form. Get in, okay, that's, right? that's even better. I figured if it was just like a web page that you go to and you submit it, um, that that might be publicly facing, but if you already have that kind of mechanism up front, that's that's perfect. Yeah, we figure there's probably ten, maybe fifteen pumpers in the area. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and uh, I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought there. There's probably fifteen pumpers in the area, and it would as long as we can reach out to them mm -hmm. and discuss the program with them, we can introduce them to the software and show them how easy it is really to in, insert the information. Then we grant rights to them to come in and put data into, into yeah. your uh, database. Okay. Sure. For, for everything. Oh, that's okay. Uh, so Irene, since you don't have a visual, Alan just arrived. So yeah, that, that's really my only okay. concern was managing the, the pumper, the certificate, the registration with the township portion of things. So if we have people on file, and if we have, I don't know how, like I'm assuming it's a web form, right? It's not like an app that you actually install. It's like, oh, a, yeah, yeah. it's just a front-end web page. Um, so if you try to go to that and you don't have access, does it give you just a canned, you don't have access to this? Or is this something that we could put a message up there that says you need to contact Hydra Terror or you need to contact Marion Township? Yeah, I believe that we could uh, incorporate that in on the software. Somewhere. Okay. Because I think that would be the best thing. So if we do have somebody come out of the woodwork, it's a, a new operation or just somebody that slipped through the cracks that they know when they get out there, oh, crap, I need to do this and they can sort this out. And hopefully it won't, it shouldn't invalidate what they just did. It just would be a delay in submitting the paperwork. So um, the other thing, just from looking at the, the sample form from 
uh, Alan's company. The one thing that I, I might want to see added that I don't think is inherently on here, we have the property address, but I, I'd kind of like to capture the, the name of the homeowner. Because it doesn't have... We can add anything that... Uh, so part of, part of the restart... Oh, wait, wait. I, I apologize. It is in there. It's just at the very, very top of the form. It's under inspect. Oh, I know that. I'm sorry. I take that back again. That's inspector information. So, yeah, I, I would, I would want to, if we can, insert that in there. So it's like property address, 123 Main Street, uh, homeowner, or like person requesting to pump out Sue Stabi, and then go into the details of like the date of inspection, all that good stuff. Yeah. Uh, I, I think that the form that was included wasn't Alan's form, but it was actually what was passed as part of the sewer management. Okay, is okay. That, is that, was that right, Kim, or was it Alan? Okay, yeah. Okay. So I know that Alan tweaked it a little bit. When okay, he, and, that's, he, and that's perfectly fine. The only reason I jumped to that conclusion is the company name, Burton Virotech, is like pre-filled there, so. Okay, So the point being is that we can put anything on that form okay. right now. Fantastic. And the other point is, we can't change anything on that form. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, you got to. You... Yeah. So if we yeah. were sticking in question two in place of existing. Uh, yeah, yeah, you can't, you can't substitute fields on a live database. Okay, uh, that's... And the other thing is, is that, you know, there will be a revision required to the ordinance. I mean, I, we think that public education is the key there, trying to get out in front of the people and just showing them the process, because once they understand the process, we think that the success rate will be, uh, will improve a little bit. Yeah, so the recommendation there about a mass mailer is good. I think we can get multiple stones with one bird here, where we send something out about having a public meeting about sewer management and also the Act 537 because we wanted to do a town hall about that anyway. And then have everybody, whether it's the fire hall or the church or the school or wherever we're gonna do it, have a public meeting there and be prepped for all the questions that are gonna arise. That way we can explain the change in the sewer management program, what that's gonna mean. It's gonna actually be more efficient. It's less money. We're gonna change the levy so that it's X number of dollars a year instead of 50. We're going to be allowing oh. pumpers to do it. Um, they just have to go through A, B, and C, but we're going to be working on making sure everybody's registered that conceivably, but just you as a homeowner, you probably want to ask before you set up the pumping and the inspection to make sure that they have done this. Um, just, you know, all that educational stuff that would be very benefit beneficial. I completely agree with you. Um, so I think first step is let's get the ordinance kind of switched around based on what we know we're going to need to do. Um, we'll have to workshop that with Colin or Andy in terms of how exactly we need to word that about allowing the pumpers to do it, requiring that the pumpers are registered. Uh, again, like I said, I'd like to see if there's anything that we can have as part of that township pumper agreement, that registration that would uh, shift the liability from us to them while they're out doing the pumping because as is um, they're out on behalf of the town township technically and the liability is ours if something happens um, which we want to avoid uh, otherwise it would just be get everybody register get the ordinance in place get everybody registered and then communicate it out that hey good news we've we've streamlined this a little bit and this is what the changes are going to be we're also going to be holding a town hall at whatever place, whatever time, whatever date. And we look forward to having you come out so that we can go through this and answer any questions that you have. You guys agree? Uh, if I could just add a comment or two. Yeah. Um, I wish we could go the route of Alan. You know, unfortunately though, the reality is that there aren't people out there that want to do the inspections alone. And so yeah. I think we're kind of, our hand is forced when it comes to, uh, having the pumpers do it as much as I don't like that. The other yeah. part of that is just something else you had mentioned before as, as far as adjusting the fees. You're now asking the office staff to do a bit more as far as keeping track of the pumpers because we're going to have to keep up with the annual 
uh, certification, make sure that they're compliant. So it's a bit more paperwork for uh, the office staff. So um, I think we also need to kind of be cognizant of the time that we're dedicating towards keeping track of the information too. Um, so that the levy may not be uh, adjusted at, as quickly as you'd like it because it's our it's our cost to our staff as well, extra hours, et cetera, as far as program management. So, you know, okay. it, it, it's creating that database within the office as far as making sure there's reminders that, I mean, it may sound simple, but there's already volumes of work to be done in that office every single day. So it, it, it's keeping track of that information. So I wouldn't adjust the levy as of yet until we have a realistic understanding of what the costs are mm -hmm. to to us as well as as Hydroterra. And again, thank you, Hydroterra, for stepping up to the plate and helping us fill that gap. And thank you very much to Alan for providing excellent service as he has in the past. So Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, that's pretty much, I think, that. I don't think there's anything else that I want to add to that. We'll uh, we'll start working on the questions to the attorney about the liability portions of it, amending the ordinance. Uh, and then I think Thursday night, we'll go through the actual act of appointing primary and alternate FTOs. Um, Alan, I do want to echo Irene's sentiment. Thank you very much for what you have done. It's been fantastic working with you. It's just a shame to see Really, really, really sorry. This is one of my successes. And unfortunately, the broader picture is unsustainable for me anymore. Uh, make a change. Yeah. Uh, no, your business. Your business. You have to do what you have to do. Mm -hmm. Thankfully, you have hydrogen. That's one. Mm -hmm. Their software, and what they're calling me, is going to be superior tomorrow. And that's good thing. Uh, the rest is, it, 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 it is what it is. So, if there's any way that I can help, um, one of the reasons I'm here today, if I can take a moment, mm -hmm. is because. Do you want to come up to the mic? Up here, uh, sure. Thanks, Joe. Yeah. Thank you, Joe. You know, my, my resignation was supposed to be effective May 31st. And I know that you're um, in a tough spot. And I'm actually, after I leave here this morning, I'm going to do a perk test. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because I'm still finishing up things that I started. And I, there's lots of loose threads yet that are remaining. The question is, when are you going to have a replacement? So Thursday night, we should be appointing uh, system design. And really? Okay. For the primary SEO. And then we would be appointing HydroTerra as the alternate. Reason being is if there was a situation where SDE was not able to do that, that is a service that Hydroterra can do. They're just a little more geographically uh, removed from our area than, I understand. than Chuck I understand. is. Um, they'd also then, being the alternate, have our authority given to them to do the sewage management program. So we basically are splitting some of the, the stuff that we want the SEO function to do. Into and there's the, nothing wrong with that. Uh, I had some other options that I discussed with, with Irene and Sue previously, mm -hmm. but you, it sounds like you're working through it and you're finding solutions that are working for you and that's that's fine yeah so um my intent is to finish what i started i'm still your seo as long as you mm -hmm. need my services or, or need me but really my office is going to be completely shut down in, in, in another two or three weeks okay and i'll be gone um i'm still operating as a consultant and a designer um i formed a new company and septic design llc but I'll be working by myself out of my home. Gotcha. You know, that kind of thing. So um, if there's nothing else you need me for, I'll go do my perk test. Okay. Well, uh, I would say have fun. I'm Sounds not like sure. you work things out. I'm glad. You know, I'm, I'm just so sorry that it worked out this way. It, it, it's we, a great disappointment to me because I really knew how this should work and it worked the way it worked the way I predicted. But I missed one thing. The glacial slowness of municipalities and the 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 lack of support and the selective enforcement from DEP. That's the problem. Yeah. So, you know, we, we appreciate everything you've done. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you, Alan.
Okay. Um, I think we have our, our takeaways on that. You have everything. I've got everything. You have everything still? Okay. Okay. Moving on to the next item. Um, oh, yeah, absolutely. Please. Yeah. 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 So I, I forwarded the engineer's report that's attached. Ah, there. okay. Thank you. And uh, you guys don't know me outside of the third phase meeting. No, I, 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 I we, feel like we know which direction you all want to go. Um, we wanted to start start uh, walking towards that direction. So okay, sounds great. Thank you very much. And as always, it's great seeing you guys. Nice meeting you too, Kristen. Okay. Next item on the agenda is the Manget Holding Tank Agreement and escrow. Um, this has been kind of an ongoing saga where they've been trying to subdivide a property. Uh, ultimately, they ran into some problems with the DEP and are not going to be putting in. Uh, any sort of system, they're going to be waiting until public sewer is implemented before they split the property, um, which raises the question of the escrow that they have uh, in place for said holding tank. What do we do with it and the agreement? Um, so, wait, so do they have, currently have a holding tank that functions on their property? Uh, no, so they were, their their plan was oh. to stop the lot and they have to put a holding okay. tank in that second parcel. But okay, okay. I was confused. at this point, she said, because they've spent so much money and they know sewers coming in, they don't want to spend more money. So Ken, what did we do with that thousand dollars? And like, well, it's an escrow. She's like, well, can't we have that back? And I'm like, I don't know, but they also have an agreement. How yeah. do we terminate that agreement? I would say if there's no tank in there, we can check with Colum. We just dissolved the agreement. Okay. Um, yep, yep. So they can't put a septic yeah. system in there because the ground is not good. Yeah, it, it's probably, I'd imagine, too clay. Yeah. So, um, but so yeah. But not moving ahead with the subdivision until the sewer's sure. in, public sewer's Yeah, in. so this would be, uh, we just have to check to see if there's anything that should be built against the escrow, which if they didn't do anything with the holding tank, I strongly doubt it. Mm -hmm. um, and it would just be dissolving that agreement and releasing the money. But let's check with Colin on the legality of it. Um, but I think that should be as simple as they started to do this, they stopped, and you basically back out of it. So we'll just keep it on the agenda. Keep it on the agenda, and we'll, we'll check with Colin. Okay. Um, okay, next item on the agenda is the Stonecroft Village deed for the open space lot 215. Uh, this is the lot that contains all the open space properties in Stonecroft Village. Section number eight, which fronts William Penn Boulevard, was conveyed to the HOA when it should have been conveyed to the township. Uh, Attorney McFarlane has spoken to Landmark about splitting the deed, um, but we're still waiting to hear back from them. So hopefully we'll have some news on Thursday night. Otherwise, we'll ask Colin to uh, get a little more aggressive in, in shaking down Landmark for, for an update. Uh, next item is the computers and the purchasing of Microsoft uh, 365 licensing. Um, ideally, what we should do, and I talked to Sue about this this morning, is we should buy two of the little mini desktops, like the one that I recommend you get, Irene, to replace the the existing meeting computers, because at this point, they're, say they're probably about eight or more years old, the ones in the office. I don't know. Okay. Because they were here before I was elected, and I've been on for six years now. At least eight. I'm so Sure, they're I, I miss, like I missed something here. So Lisa left in yeah. 14. Hold on, Erin. So I think they're pre they're pre Lisa. Jeez, okay, I think. okay. So, so Irene, go ahead. Oh, no, no, I missed I missed something here. Are we going to be able to get Microsoft 365 because we need it to save all yes. the data? Yep, yep. So, the, okay. the, the goal here and the what I'm going to propose is that we get two office workstations to replace the two that are in there. The one that's in the AA room is, okay. is, is new and good. Um, and new. then we get Office yep. 365 subscriptions like I had talked about before um, for each one of the computers. So we'd have uh, three to possibly four. And if I'm remembering correctly, I think it's either the $8 or the $10 a month subscription that you get full access to the Microsoft Office apps. So when you, when you have this, 
you're not just buying the software once like we've done in the past. It's not a monolithic thing. You just, as part of that subscription, get the newest version. So if they roll out a new version next year, we automatically get it because mm -hmm. we're already paying for it. So you don't have Fantastic. to worry about different versions on different computers. You don't have to worry about falling behind every once in a while. It's kind of an ongoing thing. And it's part of that subscription to be able to use Teams, to be able to use the, uh, the online storage, OneDrive, um, along with a whole bunch of other junk that Microsoft bundles in there. So if you want, I'll make a motion to purchase two new small office workstations. Um, realistically, they're probably going to be about 200 bucks a piece, but I'd like to authorize up to $650 for the purchase of those machines. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Jim's on mute. I think he's trying to unmute. Jim. Jim, in the absence. Oh, there we go. Aye. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Motion carried. Next motion is going to be the purchase of four Microsoft Office 365 government subscriptions. including uh, access to the Office 365 apps. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay, motion carried. Okay, I'll, I'll work on getting that done and then uh, work on getting that set up. Um, Irene, I did see your note. Uh, I'm absolutely not upset at all about the wiring. Um, <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> uh, I may have some time this upcoming week because of the rain that I can, I can come in. I may drag my brother-in-law who uh, does construction by trade because he's, he's going to be visiting okay. uh, along and we may do a little bit of neatening up, but uh, it's, it's there. It's plugged in. Um, I'm assuming it was you and Josh. Yeah. You did a, a, an yeah. admirable job. It's, it's there. It's it's not loose or hanging, so good job. Um, Thank and you. I do actually have a Windows license for the server. It's just it's sitting on my shelf at home, and I just got to punch the key in. So um, I'll take care of Is that. Is that for the well. AA computer? Because uh, um, oh, the only thing that I yeah I need I I don't have any um, uh, Excel or Word on that one. Yeah, and that's that'll show up when I purchase that Office three sixty five license for you. Okay, so so my question about that again, forgive me for being computer dumb here. Um, once that's purchased, is that something we're not going to install on the current computers, or is that something we're going to install and then reinstall once we have the new towers? You could either wait until we have the new towers, or you can install it and then reinstall it because it's it's linked to an account, not linked to a computer. Okay. So okay. I, either way, because the fine. problem is saving the data. Yeah, we want that. Yeah. We want that data saved ASAP because well, that's what that's what yeah, we're hurting about that's, that right now. That's the that's the point of the server is the that's kind of independent of the the Microsoft apps like Word and Excel. That's what you're using to manipulate the mm -hmm. files. The files are actually going to be saved on the the appliance and then backed up to the cloud. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the only problem we're having right now. We can't seem to get anything over to the server. The computers yeah, can I, talk to each other. Yeah. yeah, I'm I'm gonna be looking at that before yeah. I leave. It's it's a simple matter of I gotta think I think I gotta change something on the local firewall on the on the computers and then I gotta make sure that the accounts okay. all match up. So I I've I've got it in hand. I'm gonna do that before we leave. Um Okay, excellent. Okay. Next item on the agenda is the robo calling emergency alerts. Um Irene, I know you had gotten some some information on a couple of different things. I, I know I had looked something up in the past. Um I'm all for What's this. I was going to gonna give us a, a discount. Are you trying to say something? Yeah, right? Melissa has all that. Oh, I apologize. I just got into my car. Melissa has all the information on the uh, the fees and stuff. So. Okay. 
So we scanned everything. Yeah, let's see, I'm looking and at the... She found, um, so we are now able to, you explain it. Yeah, so there is, in our current design, there is a subscribe um, area, but it's been disabled, so it's not published onto the website. Okay. But that would just be for emails, not text or calls. Okay. So it would be extremely manual, and I don't suggest that we do it this way, but we can actually send emails to texts if we know what the person's phone number is and what carrier they're on. Remember we did that to that, I think it was Tina Orlando, where she wasn't, she wasn't answering her phone, so I text messaged her. <laughs> yeah. Um, that I, we, we should find something that's going to be a little more automated. Um, because the first, the first problem is we don't have the platform in which to do it. The second problem is we don't have the information in order to belt it out to people. So step one is let's get the platform. I'll do a little looking around. Morning, Kelly. Um, do a little looking around and see what I can drum up and we'll compare that to what we have from Civic and everybody else. But so, we saw that several municipalities have code red mm -hmm. on their website. Yeah. You know, so. Okay. I mean, if we, we could reach out to one of them and see how they like it. Because yeah. the goal here would be we put in a notice and we tell it to, to go out to text message or tell it to go out to email and text or whatever, put whatever the notice is and just hit send. Um, or in the case of like the robo calling that you record something and then it just starts going through and doing its thing. It should be a, it's almost completely unattended operation if we're going to get a service for this. So... And the robo calling could not only be for trash, it could be for snow emergencies, weather, yeah. Road closure because of culture. Yeah. Whatever. Yep. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm, I'm all for it. Let's get the details and let's make it happen. Yeah. Uh, just another comment on that. Since we're going to be sending out some information to residents about the changes in um, the uh, uh, SEO operations, mm -hmm. we'll be able to. Um, can you hear me okay? Yep, we can hear you. Yeah. Um, since, since we're going to be sending out uh, information to residents about uh, the SEO operation, we figure we may just do a quick springtime or summer, I guess it's already now, newsletter and uh, basically insert a um, pre-printed card with name, phone number, address, and uh, email. And this way people can fill out the card, return it, and we can know what their preferences are for robocalling because we know a lot of people in our community just still have a house phone and don't have cell phones, et cetera. So yeah. we're, yeah. we're also thinking about putting together a newsletter of sorts so that we, you know, just very brief information with the, uh, the self-addressed envelope with the card already pre-printed. So. Yeah. Yeah. I think that would be good. We self-addressed envelope stamped, um, form to fill out. No, I'm not going to stamp it. I'm, I'm not going to stamp it because if people don't return it, that's a cost to the township. That's, that's so true. As long that's as, true. Right. As long well, as it's... The, uh, the concern uh, is that people, have, even even though it's like 46 cents or whatever, people, I'm sure, are going to not send it back because they have to put a stamp on right. it. Right. Um, but at the same time, you know, it's their responsibility. If they don't want to be notified, they're not going to be notified. We've given the means and the opportunity in which to affect it. If, if they don't want to participate, it's on them. Okay. No, I'm fine with that. But then we should include, like, like you said, a card for this is my name, this is my address. Yep. Yep. I have a home phone number. Yep. I have a cell phone number. I prefer to be called or I prefer to be text messaged. Uh, here's an email yep. address, but, uh, you know, that sort of thing. Um, that way we can try to build out a, a contact database to use with the, the robo dialer. Yep. And why don't you yep. set it and up so way. they can register online as well? Yeah, that's a good point. We can put that on the website. You should be able to put a form on the website. But I, I know that these, um, um, like you said, they can subscribe kind of thing. Well, there's the you should be able to you should be able to put a form on that. If we have to call Civic and talk to them about changing something, it's just a simple post form. Yeah. That you could even have it do email. Like I want to register, and it would pre-fill an email. Yeah. And you could just send yeah. it. There's a bunch of different ways to yeah. do it, but we yeah. can get it sorted out. Yeah. Okay. And, this, and this way, we're still, we're still reaching out to a lot of those residents that still communicate by telephone and just by plain mail. So. Right. Yep. Okay. Uh, next is the emergency management coordinators report.
we actually have John in the house today. John, if you want to come up to the microphone. Don't you have it memorized? Don't you have it memorized? <laughs> You're like super official with this. So John Selesky, Emergency Management Coordinator. Um, several things to uh, go over off this first report. Um, the community uh, uh, NFIP worksheet that was sent from Berks County was completed and sent back um, with regards to the floodplain management, updating the ordinances. The, so I've been going back and forth with the Pennsylvania Municipal League Sustainability Coordinator. Um, there's just a few other questions they need answered, and then they will be able to give us the most current um, version of what we need for a uh, uh, floodplain ordinance. And in talking with Irene, we, I, I strongly suggest we rejoin the Municipal League. Um, I think what, was it 65 bucks or something, Irene? Yeah, it was, it was very inexpensive. The only thing was when I called, we had been a member uh, up until I came on the board. When I called and asked them what they services they provide, I got a very vague kind of answer. But since you're informing me, like the particular contact person, yep. for $60, I think we're definitely getting our money's worth in this instance. So, Because then the other thing that was not on this report that I've worked on over the last couple of days um, I think our most current uh, burn ordinance is 2008, if I yeah. remember according to the website. Yeah. We got to really update that because um, I've actually stopped several times here in the township. Um, illegal burning was an understatement in a few occasions. Uh, one person had a large um, a Class B fire, which is hydrocarbons, which they're not allowed to be burning, plastic, rubber. Uh, up against a uh, power pole, um, which I advise them to extinguish, remove, do what they have to do, because if DEP shows up, that's a big fine, plus the cost of replacing the, the pole and everything else. But um, if we are in, because I got more information from DEP, if we are currently involved in a recycling program, our ordinance has to reflect, basically, you can't burn if we legally recycle it in the downship. Um, so people that are burning plastic and rubber, no construction equipment or uh, construction debris, stuff like that. Um, businesses cannot burn. Um, Poland driving in this morning, I saw right on the other side of Stouchburg here, a huge column of black smoke coming in this morning. Um, it's just the, uh, to recognize and we, we got to enforce it. Um, some fire company stuff. I spoke to uh, Steve Weaver, uh, one of the, uh, I think he's assistant chief. The fire company has completed their hazardous materials operations training, the operations level refresher. That's one of the mandated classes you have to uh, complete as a firefighter in the state of Pennsylvania. And I know we've been, uh, we've been talking to them about Stonecroft and pumping and checking the hydrants. They were actually did go down and flow the hydrants this past week. And in the process, uh, damaged a pump on the new engine. So I spoke to Steve and he goes, they were able to get it repaired. I asked him to get me like an actual cost and whatnot of what the repairs were. Um, definitely under $500. I don't know if there's a way you guys can donate 500 to the fire company for the pump repair. Um, what was that? They get uh, sort of, they get the, uh, the foreign fire, but we can, we can look at that. That's, yeah. Cause that's, yeah. that's above and beyond. Yeah. That's a that's not something you really budget for in your uh, you know yearly operating budget for the fire company. Um, and Butch and I have been very busy uh, with road closures. Um, back on June fourteenth, Tulpa Hawk and PD called me directly um, with help on closing a road. There was uh, some inadequate warning signs put out, so getting a hold of Butch, and we did bring out the correct legal signs for a road closure um, and the warning. And initially. I was down before we got the signs out and there was probably over 30 vehicles almost hit me and the uh, police officer um, that were down on scene. And uh, then on June 20th, 
we had to shut down a section of 422. Um, initially, Wommelsdorf Fire was dispatched for wires down, uh, tree on wires down towards uh, um, like the bridge area. Then they got on scene and found that it was 100% in Marion. And between the fire company and then fire police from 47 who were on scene, they, had, they left three guys there to help us. Uh, so Butch was able to go back and get more of the cones and signs and whatnot. But fire police from 47, it's not their job to close our roads. Um, so they did stay for three and a half hours, um, three of their fire police. And my thing with them is that's their personal vehicles and they ran for three and a half hours. I don't know if there's some kind of gift card we can get them for each of the three fire police member there. It was uh, fire police number 201, 203, and 206. They're, uh, I want to say they're captain, sergeant, and one, one regular fire police. Um, the, uh, we did, there's some initial issues on that, um, where I spoke directly to PennDOT. Nobody from PennDOT actually came out, even though I asked them to come out to help. It was, uh, the wires were from Verizon, which initially they said it's the homeowner's responsibility to take care of that. And I told them, you're blocking 422. You need to come out here and we're not touching the wires until you tell us they're not energized wires. So eventually a tree crew came all the way from Grantville and we think which within 20 minutes, they probably had it open back up, but it's uh, the biggest issue on that is we do not have what we need to close the roads. I remember when we bought the stuff uh, two years ago for road closure for flooding and whatnot. And I have over the last couple of days been in conversation with a lot of fire police officials across the state. Those that actually write the program for the state. So to, I went out to, What's that place out there with the signs or, or MSI. mainstream? Yeah. MSI. MSI. So I spoke to them. I was out there and the owner out there enlightened me to a lot of DOT laws and compliance and what safety. Um, some of the signs that are currently being used, if it says road closed, are not legal signs. Um, the, we act as far as the township actually has a few of the legal, but it's white signs of black lettering for road closure because the signs that initially were put out by the, the fire company are not enforceable. They're the orange ones, right? The orange ones, yeah. not enforceable. Um, because both uh, Larry, as far as the police department and the owner out there, uh, as far as the DOT laws, they're, they will not stand up in court. So if they wanted to cite somebody for going around a road closure, they can't enforce it unless it's the white signs we already have, but we need a couple more. Okay. Um, and before I asked him to write up a quote for me as far as uh, cones, cone bars, and uh, road closure signs, emergency scene ahead signs, stuff like that, which is the 30, 3128 without tax, again, since we don't pay it. Um, but my issue and concern is if we get that stuff, where are we putting it? And then to have stuff piled up in the building again, and now if I call Butch, where he's trying to get stuff up in the back of the truck. Somebody like, cause I was climbing up in the back of the truck. I don't know how you get up in and out of the back of that truck without killing yourself half the time, but it is dangerous. So I know what previously I brought up about a, uh, I wanted a larger trailer, but to get a small single axle enclosed trailer that would take all the traffic equipment we need, some of the hazmat equipment that I've been acquiring. Um, and then if, and when we do go and get any of the pumps that we had talked about before, um, would all be stored there. So a trailer it would be parked here. So all like Butch has to do, back up, hook the trailer up, bring it, rather than spend 15, 20, 30 minutes trying to load everything in. And like thinking about yesterday, what I said is we had the trailer. I would have come down, picked it up, left it hooked up to my truck, parked in front of my house that when we had, if we had an incident, and then after, you know, all the storms are done, I'd just bring it back down here. Um, but the trailers I've been looking at um, for a single axe are all in the 5,000 range. So it's again, money. We just got to figure out. I know Irene and I are hammering in different ways to try to find grants and whatnot, but fires gets grants, police gets grants, emergency management's considered a municipal department. So we don't get grants and funding and stuff like that. Um, so that's something again to we'll talk a little bit more about later. Um, and then the wide area search class that I took uh, June 2nd, 3rd and 4th up in Tawanda, review what we covered um, setting up the appropriate incident command system because we've had two, two searches in the township now, both were, have been successful. 
but we covered how to request deploy assets, um, ground, air, and water rescue units. The big thing was how to use our USNG, the uh, United States National Grid Mapping, correctly provide our grid points for responding units, helicopters, and what, because we have had the state police uh, air units here, as well as drones from Western Berks, and drones are showing up everywhere. We're going to have a lot of those, and then Special Unit 66 out of Lebanon. Um, and then also the uh, extensive use on the FEMA marking systems for us for structures, victim locations, uh, disaster response operations, and the recovery. Um, so I have the, uh, the latest DEP fact sheet on the, the open burning uh, ordinances and some of the things that we can do. And uh, that's another one with the municipal league waiting to hear back from them. Because again, they, they have those ordinances with the most current stuff written. So again, another, another reason probably to get back with them. Um, so, uh, yeah. well, what I have on my list right now, because after talking to the fire police, um, we basically have enough right now to close a regular rural road at both ends between cones, signs, road closure and what. But again, another example of 422, because again, we are responsible for it because PennDOT takes hours to get out. Um, uh, two emergency roll-up signs, emergency scene ahead, um, two of the road closed ahead signs uh, for actual road close, because you do have to put a road closed ahead before you put a road close sign. This is a lot of the DOT stuff. Um, the sign stands, uh, 50 of the 28 inch cones and what the eight of what's called cone bars, which are these, I want to say probably four, four to five foot. You put two cones out and actually locks over the top of those to create a, an additional barricade. Um, but all that was 31, 28. And that's about the bare bones minimum that we, so we can legally close and restrict uh, lanes and whatnot. So okay. I know it's a, well, to me, it's still a sticker shock, but well, let's, um, legally. Let's check what we have in the emergency management coordinator budget because we should. Yeah, because I haven't, I haven't, that's what I told, I was yeah. telling Aaron is I haven't purchased any of the instant demand signs. I've been making those up myself. Yeah. We didn't do anything on the pumps yet. Because uh, again, talking to other fire chiefs around the area on liability of pumping out somebody's basement and if they get electrocuted, stuff like that, I'm like, we're probably just not going to do it. I know I love the idea at first, but then when I talked to a fire chief that was sued over pumping a basement out, and that basement had six feet of water, they pumped the basement and then the basement walls collapsed and they lost the structure. And the homeowner who they were trying to help ended up trying to sue the fire company. It was thrown out in the end, but yeah. they're like, they don't want the headache. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I really haven't used too much of that to my knowledge. So yeah, but what do you think, which signs and stuff? What else you need? Well, we need more signs. And, uh, people that had near us owns mm -hmm. not for the land to ourselves. No. And that was, the, you know, we got lucky with uh, Wilmsdorf Fire Police de definitely helping us out. Uh, the fire company has, I want to say, probably about 15 to 20 cones. But in talking to, um, Actually, the, the guy that literally wrote the fire police manual for the state of Pennsylvania is out of Chester County. He's a uh, borough manager. And he told me, here's your bare bones minimum. And that was the list I went off of. So you guys can effectively do a lane restriction. So I said, yeah, we closed 422. And he goes, well, who was, who was the fire police in charge of that? Because there's a lot of certifications for the fire police. So that's going to be another discussion because um, I think we, we are at the point we're going to uh, probably Thursday night to bring it up that we need to... Uh, the supervisors need to sit down with the fire company. We need we need no expectations. What they what we think they should be doing, what they think they should be doing, um, and going back and forth. But uh, I mean, we got to get the uh, a lot more dialogue going. I'm just I am extremely happy they are starting to do the training, and then the uh, the fact they were down pumping out or testing the uh, the hydrants down at, at Stone Crop, and then of course they, we have a pump failure. But it was the primer pump on it, which is not the quarter million dollar pump on the inside of the truck. It's a smaller primer pump, but still, you know, they, they usually last a lot longer, but again, we know there's things in the water down there. So, good. Okay, thank you very much, John. I'm gonna give him a copy of the
Okay. Can I circle back to something that John just mentioned? Yes. Um, you guys can hear me okay because because it's raining pretty heavy here. Um, he just said that, okay. He just uh, mentioned something about uh, finances and forgive me, I don't have second class uh, township code in front of me. Uh, the fire department it should be responsible for giving us their financial information. Yes. And so that's something we have to address. And, and just something John said before, it's expectations. It's what do they expect from us and what do we expect from them? Um, and so I think I think we need to clarify that conversation. We need to have that conversation, first of all. We need to understand because if they're not able to provide us with fire police, then we have to consider contracting with Wilmersdorf or another agency. So, again, for me, it's all about the health, safety, and welfare of the residents of, of Marion Township. And so we need to know what they're capable of and what they're going to, to provide. So I would say we would strongly invite them to come to the next workshop meeting because it's a little bit easier to have that frank conversation. Um, and, and John, uh, all of us, if we could put together a list of concerns and this way they have time to address it ahead of time and they could adequately respond to us. And then based on what their response is, we get to decide what we are or not going to do. Okay. So I think I'm hearing we should send them a letter that clearly articulates we want to have a conversation. We'd like you to come to the next workshop meeting and then outline some of the concerns that we have in terms of level setting. Um, what are the, the capabilities? What are the expectations that they have? Maybe outline our expectations about improved communication. Um, sharing of financial reports, which is a state requirement, having, I, I'd love to see us have fire police rather than having to rely on other other companies for that, but uh, we'll get the, the laundry list together and get that out to them so that we can start that discussion. Right, because we want to support our fire department, but we don't know what we're supporting because we don't know what they have, what they don't have, et cetera. And just as much as there's the expectation that we're doing things up to standard, we have the same expectation of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't want to go into this like a bull in a china shop, but I do want to try to right. clearly up front set the expectations and have some, some actual dialogue about it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, as I say, I don't know if it's picking up. The there's state laws under Title 35, a few other uh, um, state uh, codes and whatnot that I literally was emailed to me eight o'clock this morning. I was trying to read some more, more of the, the latest. But you have to have the minimum training, which we will, I think, jointly the basic what's called basic fire police, then advanced fire police, which are each 16 hour classes. And then uh, TIMS, which is a traffic incident management system, which is an online class. But then um, once they have the training, the fire chief or his designee, as it's written, must appoint the fire police captain, lieutenant, sergeant, and any other fire police that they have. Then that needs to be presented with their credentials, background checks, and then they have to be sworn in at the municipal level so one of you guys get to swear them in they said just has to be a supervisor bureau manager something you have to swear them in and has that has to be done every year and that training and everything update training and whatnot because especially out on the road i mean we're talking huge liability controlling traffic shutting roads down and um you know it protects them as well as the township but bigger it protects them in that they know what they're supposed to be doing number one because obviously there's things you can't do on certain roads and what that's, I don't want anybody getting run over, you know? Yeah. But uh, I mean, the time I've spent out there with Butch just the last couple of days, was, I don't know how the fire police do it. Um, people are just, sorry, stupid. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I, yeah. Just, just on that right. note, um, if you look at some of the old meeting minutes, this is something that was routinely done in the past. I pulled the book. I want to say it was from 2000 to 2006, 
Um, this is something that was routinely done. It, it, it's not something that's new, but unfortunately from, from our end of things, it's not information that was necessarily passed along. So, so we'll have a little powwow and work stuff out. Yep. We'll put some controls in place to make sure it doesn't lapse. It's all about safety. Yeah. Okay, very good. We'll move um, on to the next so item then. Unless you have something, Harry? Wait, hang on a second, Peter. You're, yeah. you're going to lose. I'm, I have to leave the meeting in about five to ten minutes, okay? Okay. Can, Irene, can you just Thank let you. me know when you leave so I can mark it down at the time? Okay. Well, I can Thank also you. let you know when okay. she drops, too. Um, next item is the Creekview Dairy Operation. This is at 952 on Route 419. They have made all the necessary improvements, but still need to submit their notice of termination for the NPDES permit to Jason Richards TCCD. So no action on that, information only. Uh, culverts and related site improvements uh, is the next item. This is for Marion Drive North, Sheridan Road, Marion Drive South, and the paving and guide rail improvements at Reichert Road. Uh, we did put these out to bid on 10 bid. We did receive bids uh, until J June 22nd, so it would have been yesterday. Yep, let's say, or two days ago, excuse me. Um, and we do have the bids. We'll be looking that over and awarding at the, the Board of Supervisors meeting on Thursday. Uh, next is the temporary construction easements and permanent draining oh. easement culvert replacements. Uh, Engineer Hess is still currently contacting property owners, so hopefully Chuck has a, an update for us Thursday night. Uh, the next two items are about Ballinger Road. Uh, the first one is the fill overflow matter. Um, before I misspeak, that was Jackson Township that was working with us, correct? Yes. yes. Um, so Jackson Township had assisted Butch with uh, dumping some clean fill next to the road to prevent a, uh, a I'll call it a kind of a heave out on the road surface. Uh, some of this material spilled down the hill into uh, a person's property. Um, we have since remediated that with the hard work of Butch and the Jackson road crew. We're splitting some of the costs on that. Um, and uh, I believe Chuck is actually handling this one, but uh, he's working on getting an agreement signed uh, with the, the property owner about kind of the, the ongoing liability around anything that could come from, from that. Um, yeah, so I was just kind of covering okay. the two at once. Yep. So until we get an update from him, there's really nothing more to be said on that. Uh, I do know that we'll, out of the two property owners, one of them has signed, the other one is looking the agreement over. So there may be some additional follow-up or questions, but at bare minimum, we're 50% of the way done with that. Uh, next is the extension of the, um, I'm sorry, Kelly, what was that? Okay. Uh, extension of the stormwater pipe along Marion Drive to Main Street. Uh, Engineer Hess was going to contact Charlie Parrish about our PennDOT uh, pre-approval for this project. Uh, we'll be looking to put that out to bid um, as soon as we have the pre-approval for it, really. Uh, next item is the line painting. Uh, the plan that I had outlined before calls for zones five and six to be painted, which is 12.8 uh, miles of, or 12.08, excuse me, 12.08 miles of road. This is 36,432 linear feet of outside white and 106,010 uh, linear feet of double yellow. So if we find a firm that we want to go with rather than a one, uh, we just have to look and see what the pricing is. Uh, did the laptop turn off or what? Yes. Okay. Uh, bear with us just a second. There's a slight bit of technical difficulty happening with the laptop. Peter, I'll take the opportunity to say I'm going to leave the meeting in just one minute. Okay. So we'll note the time is 10.06 for you leaving. Thank you. Hit the, hit the start. Is it going to go? There we go. Okay, we're on. Okay. Sorry about that. You're good. Okay, and we're back. Um, so what we need to do is we need to select uh, a company or put it out on 10 bid for doing the line painting. Uh, but we know 
what we want and I can very easily supply the same readout that we had in terms of this road starts here, ends here, it's this many feet and the map, we can provide that as part of the thing in the bid packet or if we call places. Um, but again, like I had specified before, the township has been broken into six areas um, with the assumption that we do two areas each year and we rotate. So that after the third year, you go back to the, the first area and you just kind of work it as a circuit. Um, any objections? I know Irene dropped, time was 10 of six. Uh, Jim, do you have any questions, comments, or concerns about that other than we just maybe potentially put it out, out to bid for line painting? No, that makes sense. Okay. Uh, then, how was that? Yeah. Yeah, I have, I have a map and I had broken it into sections. I, I want to call it quadrants, but it's not fourths. Um, but yeah, so there's, yeah, so five and six would be painted this year. And then next year, one and two would be painted. The next year, three and four would be painted. Then we'd be back on the three years. Yeah. yeah I understood. We just didn't want to go with A1 again. <laughs> Yeah, um, and we can also call some places. I'm sure there's, we just Google places that do line painting and call them and say, hey, how much is it for a linear foot of white? How much is it for a linear foot of double yellow? Get some prices, because we are, we are going to be below the bidding threshold. It just may be easier to bid it, because then we were contractually hooked up to somebody. Yeah, I think a lot of them actually use A1, which... Like I said, I don't want to. I don't want to do that again. That was painful the past like three years. Um, okay. I'll, I'll have to. I'll probably drive by that later. You said it's across from the swimming pool in Robazonia. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Next is the building property renovations and demolitions. I know Irene was still waiting for quotes from several, several demo salvage contractors, but uh, based on the discussion that we had at the last uh, Thursday meeting, um, I think our best bet is we get connected to an architect, get a design that we like, and then start chasing grants based on building. So I listened to a webinar, the Peace Arts webinar about this. And it was really interesting. Um, and they, of course, it was an architect. And then um, she did grant writing. Um, and she was a project manager. So, uh, yeah, I think that's the way to go. It okay. just, they handle everything. Yeah. Every single step. Yeah. I, from demo. Piecemealing it build. is much harder but it usually saves money. Mm -hmm. That's the only reason that I think in the, historically we've done that is because it's the cheaper alternative because you take a lot of the work on yourself. If this is a situation where we can get grants, um, if we can get a sufficient amount of grants to do this and just have it be a package, we're awarding a company to do the project management, to do the, the really the, the build out on the design, the demolition, the asbestos abatement, the salvaging of things that we want to keep in the, the new space, the construction of the new building, uh, if we needed an interim space, like a trailer or something for the office, if we can get all of that into one bundle and fund it appropriately with grants, then that's that's how we should do it. But she said, and as we know, it has the project has to be basically shovel, shovel ready. ready. Yeah, so we need to have a, a design. We have to have a plan. Yeah. They won't so, give you money until so they know it. what they're giving their money for. Yep. And I can I can understand that. So I guess the next step, I, I, Chuck had a name for us. I don't know if he gave that to Irene or not. For he somebody who is an, an architect, we should yeah. talk to the architect. Mm -hmm. um, I think we have a pretty good handle of what we want from a design standpoint um, between what Chuck gave us as samples and what I, what I had thrown together. Mm -hmm. We know what we want the space to do. We want it to be a community location. We want to have some extra office space. We want to have a big enough meeting room that we can open it up and you could use it for like a wedding reception or do like an, an indoor craft show or a bingo night or, or whatever. Having something that's a lot more multi-purpose than just we have a building that we do meetings in twice a month. 
So, okay, next item. Um, uh, we actually more or less covered that. That's the proposal for the new building. Uh, we need to ha have the project essentially shovel ready before we can start applying for grants, which means we need to have the, the design and a, a rough figure of costs. And I'll dare say put a, a timetable together of what we'd like to move on. Um, and then we'll go that way. Next is the Comcast franchise renewal. Uh, Phil Fraga from Cohen Law has asked for an updated list of addresses which Comcast would be capable of serving. Uh, I think that's pretty much every property in the township. Well, no, it's not. Really? Because not everywhere has cable access. So I don't, I reached out to, I sent an email to Comcast saying, yeah. can you give me your most current list of yeah. Who's subscribing to Comcast? I heard nothing. Yeah. Oh, you're probably not going to hear anything. Yeah, I would have, so. unless Comcast challenges it, because everybody has electrical service. And even the people in the out, outside reaches of their. But I know down at the mansion. Yeah. They don't have Comcast. They don't have cable really? service. No. Huh. Okay. No. Okay. Um, and out with us, we only got it like. Like two years before we moved there. So maybe 20 years ago. Like, you didn't even have that yeah, yeah. Really? Man, that's surprising. So, okay. They gave me the list they gave us. I think I only copied one page. Yeah. It, it still has RD1 addresses on it. So yeah. that's how old their list is. Yeah. Oh, I don't know where those properties are. Yeah. It says RD1 Catterman Hill Road. Yeah. What? Yeah. Like, how am I supposed to know what house that is for? My, you know? my thinking was we give Cullen law the full list of addresses in the township and then it's on comcast to come back and say we can't service these addresses okay. and reduce the list that we we go into the negotiation on the high end oh well, they're not going to do the homework for us please. no oh, oh no, no no i'm not saying have cohen law do the homework i'm saying we give cohen law saying here's all the, the properties in the township unless we're told otherwise by comcast the assumption is that okay. every single one of them can have comcast okay. That puts the ball in Comcast court to challenge it to say, well, it's not 800 houses. It's only 500, okay. buddy. Um, because then if we're waiting on Comcast to voluntarily give us a list, they're not going to do it. Yeah. If we're going to try and figure that out ourselves, oh that's, that's, well, I mean, it was a good attempt, but it's, it would be a monumental effort. You'd almost have to go on Comcast's website and punch in every address to have it go, yes, you can get service or no, you can't get service. And that is a huge waste of your time. Right. So, so, what I can do is I, so it's not worthwhile giving them the tax list because there are a lot of parcels that are just farmland yeah. and don't have houses, but yeah. I can give them the sewage management program list That's, and then add Stonecroft. I was, was going to say that would be. Stonecroft isn't on this list. Yeah. Because this yeah. is that old. Is that old? Yeah. So I would say that's, I would say, yeah, what's, if the, if the sewage management program is the most comprehensive it's, list that it's we the have. the most recent, yeah. Um, trash? Maybe. No. Okay. Because the farms may have a dumpster. Ah, uh, you're right. You're right. Yeah. So the sewage management thing is probably, the, you're right, the most accurate. And then we piece in the things that we know we're missing, like Tulpa Hawk and uh, Tulpe View, uh, Stonecroft, if there's been any other. Well, Tulpe View would be on there because they have septic systems. Okay. It would be stone. That's right. And then the, um, uh, yeah, Dutch, Dutch Valley Foods. Dutch Valley. But they're. That's a business. Yeah, well, I mean, they, they could, could they could get Comcast. We can add them. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, and, and again, let them let them challenge it. Yeah. Okay. We can do that. Um, the next thing is we'd also need uh, Colin to advertise a public hearing to adopt the Comcast franchise renewal when that actually comes to pass. Um, the July Board of Supervisors meeting the hearing would need to be held, but I think. Just from reading that, um, it might not be the July one because we, we need to have the new agreement in place before we hold the hearing. We need we need to have the new agreement ready. Yeah. yeah. That was the... I see what you mean now. Yeah, we shouldn't, we can't have the hearing yeah. until we have the, you yeah, know. Gonna... Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. So okay, like we can't it. we can't plan on having it at the July meeting because we don't I, I seriously doubt it's going to be done by then. So um, can I ask a question, Peter? Sure. Why on earth do they need a list of anyone who can get Comcast when the fees 
that we're asking about are based on who has Comcast. Because they want to make sure that when they're negotiating that, that it's not going to be exclusionary. For example, our current agreement may statically list that it's these properties with these services. Like it may not just say anybody in the township that gets Comcast that may be too open-ended. And it may that's what, like, but that's what our what our that's what our uh, uh, money that comes back is based on who has it. Well, what I'm saying though is that. it's who has it, but it may not be the entire township. It may be a subsection of specific addresses that are called out. Like Sue was saying that there's some addresses that are solicited as like RD one in the list that they have. Yeah. So the goal here is I don't know the legality. I don't know the legalese on it, but it may not simply say for every house in Marion Township that gets HBO, we get $2. It may say for all of the, the addresses in Marion Township with the list of them, this is what you get back as a franchise fee. And if that is the case, we need to make sure that that list is complete. Otherwise, we have we have holes, and we're not getting paid for things that are supposed to be paid to us. Okay. So I'm not I'm not wholly surprised by that. Anytime you make a blanket statement on a legal thing, they usually shy away from that, and that's kind of why. Like with I'll, I'll use the the Stonecroft thing with the the streets, where in there it says that it's in it's going to be kept by the HOA into perpetuity. Generally, perpetuity is not a, a very friendly legal legal term, unless you're talking about certain things like non-disclosure. But um, this this is why we have the the attorney, various attorneys, is they know this stuff better than anybody else. So if they're saying that we should have a, a list, an updated list of the the properties that could conceivably have Comcast service put to them, we kind of have to put faith in the fact that they they know. They know their business and that we should probably have that. But by all means, when Colin's here on Thursday night, ask, ask Colin, because it may be a, maybe something we can change the wording on. I don't know, but it may be a situation where it has to be a certain way for some bizarre legal reason. Okay. Okay. Uh, next item on the agenda is the Berks County Public Works Association meeting. This is going to be held on Thursday, July 13th at the Ole Fairgrounds. Registration is open until July 3rd. There's going to be an educational presentation uh, on line painting equipment and coatings. Um, so, so who are you authorizing to I'll, go to this meeting? I'll authorize, I'll make a motion to authorize any road crew, supervisors, emergency management coordinator, coordinators, or office staff uh, to attend if interested. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene's not here. Jim. Aye. All right. Okay. You need to let me know if you want to go. And Donnie. Um, I need to know, know. registration is open until July 3rd. That's not too far away. So yeah, that's why I need to know who's going. Okay. Next item is the Western Berks Joint Zoning Ordinance. This is section 403, okay. the amendment about keeping small pets, uh, small, uh, small domesticated farm animals and other pets. Uh, Jim and I went to the Planning Commission meeting on May 18th. There was some discussion. Uh, all the other municipalities are interested in adopting it. Um, However, they had some critiques and they wanted to kind of circulate what their, their wish list was so that we can discuss again and land on one uh, joint uh, amendment that fits for everybody. Um, a number of the municipalities expressed that when they looked at their, their, their court ordinances, they were like, wow, everybody's out of compliance, very similar to what we, we ran into. Uh, so they recognized the need to change. They just want to make sure that it's kind of tailored, not just for Marion Township, but then it fits for everybody. So um, I think there's going to be more discussion at next joint zoning or joint planning commission meeting. Do you know when that is? Um, it was supposed to be last month, but it got postponed. Okay. So theoretically, July. Or so uh, actually, it was, excuse me, it was supposed to be this month. I, I misspoke. Uh, I don't remember off the top of my head. Um, Third Thursday. Yeah. Okay. Um, but uh, unless it gets moved, it should be the one in July. 
And uh, we'll, I'll make it a point of being there, Jim. If you're able to be there, we'll we'll show we'll up be... and we'll discuss with everybody. But we'll we'll see if they're going to have it in July. They may not be ready. They may not have their their stuff that they want to discuss by then. Go through... Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I don't even think they were doing that yet. I think it was they wanted to come and we we discuss as a group yep. so that they can take the draft back okay. to their boards, yeah. back to their planning commission, and say this is what the group discussed. These are our ideas. Okay. What are your thoughts? Okay. So we'll see how that shakes out, but yep. July yep. conceivably. Right. Uh, next is the stormwater maintenance ordinance and fees update. I'm going to table that since we don't have full quorum. Uh, and then the last thing is the Qualtech services bankruptcy document. Um, I'm not, so I'm not hundred percent sure why we got that. It's two things here. I did not scan to anybody because they're both 10 pages. Okay. I have no idea what this is. Colin has no idea what it's about. Uh, I mean, it's a, it was addressed to 42 Water Street, which we've not been 42 Water Street since addressing got updated, which is like Doris did that when she was here yet. That's probably 30 years ago. So I have no idea what that's for. I mean, this almost looks like somebody is trying to declare bankruptcy. Yeah. Why did we get that? Southern District of Texas. And there is, I went on the website, it's a legitimate website. Yeah. That you can like um, apply for your share kind of thing. Uh, I yeah, saw that I... PA1 call was on it and they're going to get, they applied for, or I don't, I forget how that works, but um, their amount was two hundred thirty-five dollars. Hmm. <laughs> like, I don't know, it didn't yeah, make sense I, to me. I yeah. I... I mean, if nobody knows what it is, I guess we just file it. Yeah, uh, let me let me read that in greater detail. But that okay. that looks like somebody is declaring bankruptcy, yeah. and just the way that reads, it looks like it's somebody like, at our address. That is. Yeah. 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 I. Hmm. Yeah, it's just weird. Okay, that's the last item on the agenda. Uh, I do not have any additional comments. Jim, do you have any comments? No, sir. Okay, thank you. Do you have any comments? I do not. Okay. Just that i am um, like to just officially welcome Melissa. Thank you. And she's wonderful. Yeah, welcome so. to the team. It's a shame we only have you for the summer. Yeah, I know. <laughs> okay. That's it. Okay, seeing no other items on the agenda. Uh, Kelly, yes. Yes. Okay. 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 Yeah. So, so let's do this, Jim. If you can make it, go. If you can't, let me know, and I will. I'll try and clear my dance card and get there. Okay. Um, and I'm going to quick check the weather forecast because I know I had looked at this. Uh, yeah, but I think it was still in like the 80s, like 80, high 80 percent. Uh, Come on. And the weather.com site is so slow. Come on. Yeah, I'll just check it on my phone. But yeah, it, as of as of yesterday, it was it was pretty high. So hopefully, it holds out. And you guys can you have the picnic, but uh, do you guys have a rain date potentially if it does? Okay. Okay. So community picnic tomorrow, assuming it doesn't rain like crazy. If it does, then no rain date. Um, the, there's a, a movie night coming up. Is that the, I can't remember the next one because I know the last one got washed out. Is that the 20, is that the 30th?
uh, be the 14th. It'd either be the 14th or the 21st. So the 14th is the second Friday. The 21st, the 21st is the third Friday. Okay. Okay. So July 21st, there's going to be a movie night in the park. Okay. Uh, anything else you'd like to, to bring up, Kelly? Okay. And then we got to make sure that Colin gets us the agreement for the, the storage trailer. That way they can they can put that in place there. I think he was waiting for an exhibit from them. Can we find out? Because mm -hmm. I thought we were just waiting to get it signed. Mm -hmm. Okay. We'll, we'll straighten that out, whatever it is. Um, Regrettably, I'm out of town. I can't be there tomorrow. Uh, I do want to, though, discuss with the board and with uh, the committee about putting a fence around our ball field. I had uh, sent you some information on that, Peter, yep. a month or so ago. I yep. think that'd be great for the kids to have an opportunity to hit a home run over the fence once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> the the back end of the ball field really is the big... It, Why not? Why not both? <laughs> let's let's try both. Um, but okay, yeah. Let's uh, let's have some conversation. Maybe at the the next time that we have uh, either the MTCA meeting, we can bring it up there, or we can bring it up on a Thursday night if we have Kelly and Don and a couple other people from uh, the community association present. Super. Okay. Seeing no other items on the agenda and no other uh, statements on the floor, I'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting. The time is now ten twenty eight a.m. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Jim. Aye. Meeting adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Have a good rest of the weekend. See you Thursday.